Good evening, everyone. I uh, want to welcome to Wednesday night Bible study, prayer time together. So great to have the ones who are with yes. us in the live audience. And uh, thank you for being here. Others coming on in. Uh, there's folks joining us online right now. So if you're joining us online, go ahead and let us know who you are. Uh, give us a hi. Give us, uh, you know, any... Uh, uh, thing you want to express, maybe you have something you want to say, share with us, let us know. So far, we're welcoming in uh, Penny Morehouse, Penny from Moorhead, Kentucky, my friend there, good to have her. Uh, Brenda <coughs> Bishop is watching, Brooke Griffith is watching, uh, Doris and Larry Mullins, Brenda Bishop, Brenda, good to have you, oh, she commented mm -hmm. there, and David Crump is watching, yeah, <laughs> pretty close, isn't he? Yeah. All right, so it's so good to have you guys. Let me just run through a couple of announcements. Uh, hey, we got a lot of things going on, but we want to keep you up to date. First of all, you know, Ron, we're having the announcements come on on Sunday morning before we start worship. Has everybody noticed that? So if you're in the back getting a donut, coffee, and the announcements come on, that's kind of a highlight to say watch and start making your way into the sanctuary. So that's at least what, what they told me to say. All right. So we want to make sure you know what's happening, what's going on. This Sunday, we're going to have a guest speaker with us. Sister Jeanette Flynn is going to be preaching for us in the morning service. Uh, my niece is being getting married in Muncie, married. Indiana. So uh, I have the honor of going and help preside, preside over that uh, uh, wedding on Saturday evening. So we're going to be gone this weekend. It's really cool. In our family, there's like five pastors. So when one of them gets married... The other four have to <laughs> split the parts up, but it's going to be really fun. So Stephanie's getting married there. Uh, she's the pastor at the gathering right. in Muncie, Indiana, so it's a real uh, honor to be able to be there with them. I miss you guys. I look forward to being back, but uh, it's kind of a family ordeal we've had. We want to get together for that. Also, Haley Simpson is going to be with us Sunday morning doing our missions minute, our Faith Promise mm -hmm. missions minute. Uh, Haley and her uh, husband both are working really closely with crew uh, at Western, I think it's at Western Kentucky, and uh, she is the campus missionary, so she's in charge of uh, recruiting folks for crew. It's really a disciple-making organization. If you've ever heard of Bill Bright, he started the organization, it was called Campus Crusade for Christ. Now they just call it crew, uh, but it's a really great organization. When I was in Moorhead, we had a chapter there. As a matter of fact, that's how I met Haley and her husband there. So uh, you guys will really enjoy. She's just going to give a quick update. They're part of our Faith Promise Missions budget. Uh, Women of the Church of God are going to be meeting Tuesday, October the 18th from 6 to 8. Uh, they're going to give details of the upcoming fall retreat. And they're asking everyone to bring your favorite soup to <coughs> share with a friend. Okay, so ladies, remember that. Uh, also, we're going to be having a crisis response team uh, meeting or training, I'm sorry. I don't know if you know or have you ever heard about that before, but everyone would be welcome to come be a part of that. Basically, these are training second responders, not first responders. So we're the ones, or the training would be given for those who would go in after a natural disaster, a flood, God forbid, a school shooting, or anything like that. Truly, God forbid. Uh, if that would happen, people who have this certification training can go in talk to kids, pray with teachers, really be the hands and feet of Jesus in that particular situation. So if you would be interested in doing that, the training is coming up uh, Thursday, October the 20th, and Friday, October the 21st here at the church. On those two evenings, it will be from 6 to 8 p.m. Then the final training session is Saturday from 9 till 2. Lunch will be served. Uh, it's a lot of time training, but there's really a lot of uh, information, detail, and a lot of good training that you get to help others in a time of crisis. So uh, that cost on that is $35, but I'd love for you to come be a part of that if you guys would get a chance to. We still need uh, candy for our community trunk or treat. We're really excited about this. This has grown, by the way. Uh, not only is it uh, five churches that are participating together, it's uh, <coughs> FFA, <coughs> Farmers of America, FCA, uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and all of Clark County Youth Sports now is involved in this with us. So we've got the superintendent of schools, we've got county officials, city officials. They're all really making a big push to support our efforts for a community-wide trunk or treat. The reason that's so important is two things. Number one, it gives us the chance to let kids know how special they are to us in our community. 
But most importantly, and the reason I'm so closely associated with it is because it shows a unity among our church, uh, our churches, other various congregations, other civic groups and organizations, and our local officials, and uh, our local, yeah, all of our local officials too. So it's everybody coming together in Winchester and Clark County for the good of the kids. Yeah, it's a great way to have that unity. Also, <coughs> uh, gym will be open each evening right now uh, through the winter months. It'll be Tuesday at 8 p.m. So if you want to pick up basketball games, whatever, Ron, you've been working on your hook shot. I have. All right, come on out. Yeah, they need a, they need a really fast point guard. <laughs> You know, I would if it was full court, but I am not wasting my time on half court. Okay. See, okay. there you heard it right there. So those of you that, that need a break. And how many times have I blocked Christy Mark? <laughs> a lot. Yeah. A lot, yeah. Actually, she, he was hanging on to her knee there that one time. <laughs> I she was, yeah. I was. She missed the shot, though. So yeah, she did. That's all that counts. So we also want to remember those uh, prayer requests right now. Let's continue to pray for Ed Buckner. Ed mm -hmm. had I talked today. to Ed today. Good. I Good talked good. to him. I'm sorry, yesterday I talked to him. So we want to pray for Ed and yes. remember him. Uh, we also want to pray for Pam Bridges. Pam mm -hmm. is back in ICU in Lexington, so let's keep her in our prayers as well. Uh, let's continue to pray for uh, there's there's others. Judy Wilder. Judy Wilder. Judy mm -hmm. uh, had surgery this past week and didn't get a really good report from that. Uh, we definitely want to pray for Judy. Hold her up in this time as well. Ron, do you know? Of we're we're right going now? over to see her tomorrow. Oh, and good, uh, good. Judy, if you're watching and can yeah. hear, uh, we'll be there tomorrow. But we're going to have prayer for you tonight after class. Yes. Yeah, we're going to have a special prayer for Judy and uh, actually Ed and, and mm. Pam as well. And so Brooke. we want to have a time of prayer after this. If you'd like to stay and pray with us, ask those who are joining us online to continue to pray for mm -hmm. us as well. All right. Uh, so let's, go, let's remember our nation, our country. We certainly want to remember our world that we're living in today. Uh, my heart goes out to many of our missionaries throughout the world uh, in various places, especially anywhere in Europe right now, anywhere on the continent of Europe, missionaries there, as well as other church missionaries who's there from other groups and mm -hmm. denominational groups. We want to pray for them and really remember them during this time of crisis and this time of war. Mm -hmm. okay. Ron, would you pray Father, for we thank you for this day and all your many blessings. And Father, first of all, we thank you for Calvary for your love, your grace, your mercy. And Lord, these names that we've held up, I know these people have already talked to you. And Lord, I ask that you would bless them, be with the medical staff, the nurses, the anesthesiologists, the surgeons, and all who take care of them. And Lord, when all the surgeries are done, let, let, let it surprise the doctor. And they say, well, we didn't think it was going to be what it was. But Lord, we know you can do that. You can just speak the word and it will happen. Be with those that are watching. On live streaming, Lord, if they have needs, we ask you to touch their needs, their family. They're our family. And, Lord, we ask you to move in their needs, Lord, and bless me and Alan, anoint us afresh that, that we may speak your word. What an honor it is to do that. Amen. Lord, we ask you to Amen. go with us, lead, guide, and direct us, be with all of our activities that are upcoming here at, at our church. And we'll ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. We have just a few more of that <clears throat> for joining us online. Let me just welcome them, thank them for being here. Uh, Ron, there's a man online, Lester Steele. Mm -hmm. uh, he says he likes your shirt. All right. Well, he ought to. Okay. He says he likes it. He's watching. Uh, Brooke Griffith checked in with us. Uh, Becky Holland. And also uh, Amy Berryman. Amy's yes. checked in. Amy and Bill's watching. Amy also has a special prayer request for her cousin, Angie Mae Watts. So at the end of this service for prayer time, we'll pray for Angie as well. Amy, we'll lift her up. And, uh, yeah. and Becky Holland is watching us from Chicago. Hello from Chicago. I didn't know Kentucky had a Chicago. Yeah, she's opening up a McDonald's You think it's the other probably. one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <coughs> well, we got Chicago a, right on the side of trap, probably. We got, a, we got a Paris. We got a Versailles. We've got a <laughs> Versailles. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, did you, just for, did everyone see this? Can, can you get a close up? Dave, can you, I know you can. Uh, pumpkin spice Oreos. <clears throat> I, you know, I guess what it is, I ask for it. People post this stuff. I think it's funny, and I repost it, and they actually think I like this stuff. So if you buy me this, I am giving it to people who love pumpkin spice everything. 
before the service is over, somebody will have it. <laughs> Someone, yeah, I'll just bring it up if and leave it. Someone it. comes out of the audience and says, I like that. I'll eat it. <laughs> well, I had a, I, someone gave me a pumpkin spice moon pie. How many ever heard of a moon pie? All right. Now, I thought it was bad they gave me a pumpkin spice moon pie. I had someone tell me, I don't even know what a moon pie was. Uh, that's, you know what I said? That's United, Get out. That's United States. We have taken your passport from the state of Kentucky. You have to leave. I went to the store, and I said, can you tell me where you all have the moon pies? They said, what is a moon pie? And I told them, they said, you might want to check the frozen section. <laughs> What's this country coming to? I'm telling you. Oh, man. Oh, well. Ron, where are we? We better tonight? gear down. Yeah, we, <laughs> we were wild before it started. We were. Well, you know what? Pumpkin spice Oreos will make anything wild. They'll all. They'll not be open laying right you know, here. I actually had a thought. If I take these back to Kroger and tell them I picked them up by mistake, could I get the regular Oreos? <laughs> I don't have the receipt though, so I better give them to someone. <laughs> Lord help us. <laughs> Let's talk about, I'm, Let's you're going to shine tonight because you're going to add so much into this. <laughs> Bringing people to Jesus. Oh, I love that. Bringing people to Jesus. Not yeah. as easy as we think. No, but right. if you want to follow along with us, turn to the book of John. Now, we've got two upcoming lessons, Should the Spirit Not Change Our Minds or Lead Us in Another Direction. But we're going to go back to the New Testament. We might have a special music in that. Wow. Yep. All right. Are you singing? No. Okay, John's Gospel, Chapter 1. Now, let's just jump down to, to verse 29 first. And uh, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, hmm. who takes away, don't cover up, but takes away the sin of the world. Nobody else could say that. There was never a cow, a bull, a dove, nothing could have done it, the blood of it. That's right. Who takes away the sin of the world. Now let's jump to verse 35. The first disciples. Verse 35 says, And again the next day John stood with two of his disciples. John the Baptist disciples. Probably John and Andrew. Probably <clears throat> who that was. But at that time they were following John the Baptist. And verse 36 said, and looking at Jesus as he, as, uh, as he walked, he said, behold, the, again, the Lamb of God. Who else but John could say that? Shepherds said, behold the babe. The <clears throat> wise men said, behold the 8 to 12-year-old young boy. Yeah, that's right. Nazareth said, behold the carpenter's son. Yeah. But John the Baptist said, behold yeah. the Lamb. Yeah. My goodness, That's can you imagine, I, I don't know That's what I'd have done if I'd have been there, though, the carpenter's son, but the Lamb of God. Mm. And verse 37 says, and the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Here is probably where they began to be disciples of Christ. It's when they heard him, nothing to do with John the Baptist, but they followed Jesus at the time meant to be. And verse 38 said, then Jesus turned and seeing them, Follow him and said to them, Who do you, what are you looking for? What are you, what are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated teacher, who are you staying at? <clears throat> that, you know, I've, I've read that for many years and really didn't look at it. But what do you seek? This, this, this is a question that has eternal consequences. It does. I mean, I'm seeking you. Even to today. Now, speaking of an, uh, now, and they said, where, where do you dwell? Now, that's speaking of, they thought, wanted to know where, his, where he was staying at, the, probably at that particular time, location. While the answer to that question, if they knew what we knew today, <laughs> goes far beyond any mortal human being's imagination. Hmm. Where's your home? Where are you staying? And that has always amazed me. That dimension that he's talking about, far beyond anybody's comprehension. Now, actually, his dwelling place is the throne of God. Amen. And I mean, where are you staying? But here they started asking. Here they step up and they, they go from John the Baptist and they go to Christ. Now, verse 39. Now, you know what? I got excited this week studying this when I read this. And he said to them, come and see. Now, I've got to stop. The journey that they began right then and right there at that particular time, 
is still going on to this very hour today. Yeah. Come and see, see where I am. He didn't yeah. tell them. Mm -hmm. I'm living here down here at mm -hmm. 2500 Colbyville Road or something. He said, come see where I'm living. Right. I don't live here, but come and see. Because he knew that they had to follow him. <clears throat> Now, was Christ bringing people to him? Yes. Yes, he was. And I don't know what it could have been about, but it, it, it sure got their attention and he went. Yeah. But it never will end. Now, that journey, come and see, is going to go on from here on. Come and see. Present tense, something 2,000 years ago was present tense today. Why don't you come and see where I live? Why don't you see where I'm going? Come and follow me and do that. And verse 40, and one of the two disciples who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew. Hmm. First time, now he's mentioned that John and Andrew back in the other verses, but here <coughs> is the first time that he says Andrew's name. He calls him by name, here by name. And verse 41 said, and he first found his own brother Simon and said to him, boy of all people to find, Simon Peter, <laughs> and him your brother. And the first, uh, and he first found his own brother Simon and said to him, now here's where I want you to explain this. We have found the Messiah. They just met him. Mm -hmm. What's his name? Jesus. He could be the Christ, but here you say, no, he <clears throat> is the Christ, the Messiah. Andrew from somewhere picked that up, and the Holy Spirit, I'm sure, which is translated the Christ. Mm -hmm. We have found the Christ. My goodness, the Messiah, the one that we've been waiting for and we've been looking for. Now, verse 41, I want to go to that. And he first found his own brother, Simon. Now, you know a lot about Andrew, and you can jump in anytime you want to. And I won't have to call on you. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, <coughs> Simon Peter's brother. Now, notice here Simon Peter's name's mentioned. Yeah. So they must have known about him. I'd say he's a rough character, but they must have known to him by then uh, of who he was and what he was. But throughout history, throughout history, people have been known for what they've done. Yeah, you know, just just Andrew's name in the Hebrew or the Greek rendering of his name, Andreas or Andrew, <coughs> literally means manly, brave conqueror, one who conquests or makes conquests, strong, courageous, and warrior. All of those terms go into uh, the makeup or the foundation of that name, Andrew. So, But you Andrew. never put that with Andrew. Oh, though. you don't. You, you really don't. It's interesting. Uh, you know, you yeah. got so many people the last time you preached <coughs> on Andrew. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, no, it's not our fault. There's not that much said about Andrew. You have to yeah. go and dig for it. And there's yeah. really not that much in the Bible. And we're going to talk about that that's yeah. said for him. But even in the world, many people are known. See, I learn all the time. What's that guy you preached on the other day? <clears throat> Escalon or somebody? Got all that money? Oh, Elon Musk. Yes. Yeah. Can't $243 billion. He's going to buy Twitter. I'm out. Are you, do you have a Twitter sheet? I have no earthly idea if I've got a Twitter sheet. <laughs> if you know I've got one, let me know. But okay. let's go to the biblically the people that stand out and what they were known for in the Bible. Well, so we start with Noah. Was known as a righteous man in an evil age. Look at Job. Yeah. He was a righteous man. That does not mean he did not sin, but he shunned evil. And he held on to God all the way through what he did. David was known after a man after God's own heart. Man, that's a whole sermon you could it preach is. right there after oh, God's yeah. own heart. Jonah, he bought the ticket. Yeah, He went the other way. Jonah's known for buying the ticket and go, not going where he was supposed to go. He went the other way. Thomas, first thing they do is put doubting to him. Oh, you mean doubting Thomas. Peter's known as the outspoken disciple, which that's true. Yeah, But, you know, I think that's what Christ loved about Peter. Peter would say what he was thinking. If it was on his mind, guess where it came? Bang, where it went. Right to his mouth. <laughs> but Christ knew his mind and his mouth. Yeah. But still, he liked for him to do that. But <clears throat> really, Peter had a lot of influence on the other disciples, too. Yeah, he did. 
Now, they stood back and watched him get his skinnings many, many times, but yeah. they learned from Peter's skinnings of what he got. Yeah. Uh, John's known as, as the disciple who Jesus loved. Yeah. Now, did he love him more than? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. That's always bothered me, why John would say, my name is John, I'm the disciple that Jesus loved. Are you bragging? No. I believe, and I don't know the answer, but I believe what he was saying he even loved me. Yeah. And I want everybody yeah. to know that Jesus Christ even loved me. I don't think he was boasting or bragging that, yeah. that, that Christ loved him better than anybody else. I really don't. I don't think it was. The sad one, Judas Iscariot. Oh, Let's yeah. do one on Judas one time. Judas yeah. was very intelligent. They said, oh, I'll, very intelligent. I'll probably misquote it, but they actually said that probably Judas, Matthew, and Nathaniel was probably the most smartest one of the bunch yeah. uh, that they were brilliant. They were businessmen. But Judas <laughs> is known throughout the Bible as the one who betrayed Christ. Now, it's strange that every time you read over the name Judas Iscariot, that it says, he who betrayed Jesus Christ. I think that the Holy Spirit meant for people that's going to follow you, Judas, the rest of your life. And you know, after that happened, there was a period of time that nobody would ever name a child Judas because of the betrayer. But he is plagued with the betrayer, and that's all it is. Now, there was another Judas, but that, we're not talking about him. But he's known as the disciple who betrayed him. Paul's known as a fearless, powerful leader. Yep. That he's, and you know, you've been teaching on Paul, preaching on Paul, but you know, Paul didn't have a bed of roses, okay? No, no, he didn't. I mean, Paul had it rough. He had it made with the world, but then he turned and he had it rough when he came out of the world. But Andrew is known for those he brought to Christ. That's yeah. it. Yeah, and boy, what? look at the ones he brought to Christ. Peter, James, and John, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But that's all you know about him. Yeah. And we're going to talk about what we don't know about him and what we do know that he didn't do. We don't guess. Th I don't think, know. Think about this. Peter was, in, or Andrew was instrumental in bringing Peter, James, and John. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, to Jesus. Who was the inner circle of Jesus? Peter, James, and John. So think about Andrew. It's almost like he has to recede while these other three that he brought to Jesus almost takes a more vaulted position or at least one of influence with Jesus himself. Because how many times does Jesus go away and take Peter, James, and John with him? The inner circle. So it, it speaks even more to Peter's character there than anything else. He was able to lead from the front, lead from the middle, and lead from behind. What a great leader. Who, who have we brought to Jesus? <clears throat> good question no yeah. I, that's yeah. just a, a question yeah. that's a very good question don't know much about Andrew they don't know nothing about us but they knew that about Andrew and we're going to get just on what you was talking about but at first Andrew brought Jesus to Jesus was Peter his brother Peter but as soon as Peter joined the disciples he became the spokesman yeah because of his strength his uh now, now, this is what I want you to talk about right here. He became the spokesman for the 12, while Andrew remained in the background. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> if you want to look at an equivalent, look at Paul, or who was Saul, before his conversion as Paul, on the road to Damascus. Mm -hmm. A little-known disciple named Ananias was the one who prayed that he would receive sight. <laughs> Think about that. I'm and sorry, it, I laughed. And, and an even more obscure disciple by the name of Barnabas, mm -hmm. who Cornelius. was a son of encouragement, yeah, actually brought Paul to the leaders in the inner circle at Jerusalem, introduced him as a Christian to exactly. them, and began to lead and teach him everything he knew. You know why I sniggered at Ananias yeah. when the Lord said, Go down, there's a man down there blind. I ain't going because. Now, what, now what'd you say his name was? <laughs> because he came here to kill me, to be honest. And yeah. I ain't going down there. And the Lord said, well, you'll find him a little different right now. You, you and I be praying as Ananias. Now, Lord, we, you've got him right where we want him. Yes. No, no. But then God said, Lord said, he is my chosen yeah. vessel. That's it. 
Is that anything we're not to God? No, we're his chosen vessels. Just what do we hold will be the thing. But he became spokesman to that for the 12, while Andrew remained in the background. Not much is said about Andrew. No, no. You have to really look. And really, you, when you preached on him, you got my attention to being mm. thinking about it. But it was Peter, not Andrew, who rose to prominence as one of the three inner circle. Yeah. Peter, James, and John. Why wasn't Andrew there? Why wasn't anybody else there? I have even heard pastors say that that was Christ's favorite disciple. I don't know about that. I don't think Christ had a favorite disciple. But he knew him. <clears throat> he knew him. I, the way I look at it, because, you know, he did choose the 12. And then there was Peter, James, and John. And I don't think he's making a difference in them as individuals, people, and the contributions they make to the kingdom. I think the reason a differentiation was made is because of their influence on others. I, I believe that. Uh, I think. Let's see, where did they go? Uh, There's three places they went. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to botch this one. Well, they were there raising the little girl yeah. to Peter, James. And you know what? I get excited every time I read about that because it was Christ, Peter, James, and John. Yeah. Who else was in there? Well, the little girl. But who else? Death. Death. And he had to leave. He did. He had to Amen. leave. He, uh, Amen. Christ ruined that one. Yeah. But let's see, they were at Mount of Transfiguration. Mm hmm. And Peter wanted to stay up on the mountain. That's fine. We'd like to, too. I don't yeah. want to come down a lot of times. But I don't think it was favoritism that he did then. Mm -mm. But it was the influence, I, I'm with you, that Peter had on other people, James had on other people, and John had on other people. But we also have to realize, too, because the Bible lets us see both sides of the person. While Peter, James, and John was with Jesus in all these instrumental moments, they also led the snoring section when he asked them to pray <laughs> for him in the garden for one hour. Remember? When Jesus went in the garden of Gethsemane to pray? Why did he, he want them to go? He knew he was going to go to sleep. But now, I'm not taking up for them, but they right. were physically tired, right. okay? Yeah, and, and, but, but my point is, and pointing this out, is so we understand in all of the great men and women of the Scripture, they were not infallible. Mm -mm. They had their weaknesses. So, in, in other words, we learn from their example. I'm certainly not diminishing their example, no. but we have to realize we're just like them. They're people too. Yeah. Remember, they wanted to bring down fire and scorch yeah. a bunch of people. <laughs> That's true. They were zealous. Well, who wouldn't? I mean, yeah. now think about this right here. We do not read anywhere of Andrew resenting Peter mm -mm. or anybody no. else. No. Oh, not at all. He was stuck in the background, yeah. but he was, now get this, he was satisfied just bringing people to Jesus. Right. Amen. He didn't have to be a spokesman. He didn't have to have that. But when he brought, now notice, when he brought them to Christ, he left them with Christ. Yeah. Let Christ do the rest. Yeah. His true. job, like you say about fish, something you say about fish, we catch them, let him clean them. Yeah. And, yeah. He, and he will do that. But isn't that strange? We don't find anywhere of Andrew, of course, he might have been scared of Peter, I don't know, where, where he resented him, but he was satisfied yeah. in just bringing people to Jesus. That's right. He was. He was. And, and, you know, so just use that as an example. If we would use what God has gifted us to do, do you know there's enough joy, satisfaction, and excitement and fulfillment in that than trying to be someone we're not? True. We don't have to be someone we're not. We don't have to do the things that we see other people do. We just need to serve God the way he wants us to. That's liberating. To me, that's freedom. I mean, I think we all would gravitate to that and love that, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, here's where it gets good. It was also, and we're going to get on this a little bit later, but it was also Andrew who found the little boy. Yeah. And we're going to talk something that's yeah. jumped out at me that I'd never read before. Brought his lunch, didn't he? That the found the boy yeah. with the loaves and yeah. the fishes. What did he do? He brought him. To, you know, he could have said, give me them fish and bread. I'll take it to the master. But he brought the boy with him. Yeah. We're going to talk about that kid. But he brought not only the fish and the loaves. Am I overreacting to that? Uh -uh, not but at he all. brought the not boy. Yeah. We're going to talk about that boy. He yeah. brought the boy. I think that's important because... Andrew, okay, so think about this. I hate to butt in, but just think. Don't. Andrew knew that it wasn't about the food that boy had. He knew that J 
that boy needed to meet Jesus. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Sure. Like, I believe Andrew really knew Jesus could feed them out of thin air. But I think Andrew realized what influence Jesus could have in this young boy's life and what kind of impact that would have on others. Again, he's bringing people to Jesus. Now we'll go to John chapter 6. Now, one thing that got me, I've never read this in my Bible. Somebody's put it in here. I've never read it. But I want to read a few scriptures where he feeds the 5,000. Uh, and after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those that were diseased. And Jesus went up onto the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Do you remember preaching on that? When Jesus got along with the disciples, yeah, and they, and they when talked. He, when is it before he sent them out in the storm, or that? But he got, there were two places he got along with his alone yeah. with his disciples. This yeah. is one of them yeah. where we have you preached on where we have to get along with him sometimes, oh, yeah. and just oh, get away yes. from all the other things. Now the feast of the Passover yeah. of the Jews was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude, wow, coming toward him, he said to Philip, here's Philip, where are we going to get any bread to feed these people that they may eat? Did you ever notice they never said anything about drink? Mm -mm. Where are we going to get that? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Now, Philip answered him, 200 denarii uh, worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that everyone may just have a little. Just That's how we look sometimes. Yeah. Lord, yeah. will you just give me a little? And like I said, that time I prayed, I was so proud of myself when I prayed by myself in service. My grandmother was, Lord have mercy. She was there, and, and after it was over, she said, Ronnie, boy, was that you prayed down there? I said, it was. <laughs> well, that's the most pitiful prayer I ever heard prayed in my life. I said, we serve a big God. You pray to him big. And she was, she was right about that. But now verse 7, Philip answered him, and that's what he said. Now, right here in verse 7, presents carnal thinking. Now, you know what? If we look at and here comes 5,000 people down this highway coming starved to death, going to come back and eat in the gym, we would too. Philip presents carnal thinking right there when he did this, as we do very often. So who are we leaving out when we think, where are we going to get to Christ? Christ. He will make a way regardless, but, and, and he will do that. But this is the, this, that's not the way that the child of God should think. Now, that doesn't mean go out here and say, Lord, I'm going to step out in front of this back truck on I-75. Will you save me? No, you're going to get run over. But this is the way the world plans, but not the way children of God plans. That's right. That's right. We've got him. We've got him on that. Now, look at verse 8. And one of his disciples, Andrew, who Simon, Peter, Simon Peter's brother, said to them, at least here Andrew included Christ. Why didn't the others? Hmm. Philip didn't. What are we going to do this? Andrew included Christ right here at this. He thought about him and he was doing his thinking. Now verse 9 says, there is a lad here hmm, who has five barley loaves and two small fish, comma. But what is that among so many? <laughs> mm -hmm. You'll see. But now, you know what? We've got the book. We know how it ends. If we'd been there, we'd have been rattled Saint. just like, like he was. Who oh. was this boy? Yeah. Where did he That's come from? question. Yeah. I think I may have found, they said that there was always a young boy, man, that traveled with the disciples to provide food, carried the food for them and everything, because a lot of times they'd be in these secluded places that... Uh, that they couldn't get, get food, and he, he would carry it, and that's probably who that was. Now, who he was, nobody knows, and anything else. But what's, now here's, I'm going to get off on a tangent. You'll have to reel me back in. Hey, little boy, what you got in your basket? Fish and bread? Yeah, but you heard the disciples said, what's that among so many people? Hmm. I bet the little boy thought, nothing. But in the hands of Christ, uh, mm -hmm. You're going to eat to your full. Amen. And some leftovers by then. Amen. But what was in his basket? This has bugged me. I've wanted to teach on this for a long time, but I'm just kind of trying to get away from it, <laughs> really, because it bothers me too much. But some fish, small fish, too. Small. 
Probably Ooh. sardines. Pro it could have been. Could have been. Very easy could have been. Uh, and, and, and some loaves. Yeah. What's in your basket? That's a good question. What's in my basket? Fish and loaves? Don't have any of them. But think about that. Seriously, guys, think about that yeah. just for a minute. What's in my basket? Yeah. A weak prayer? Yeah. Uh, doubting Christ? Uh, fear? Worry? Anxiety? Is that what I've got in my basket? Or have I got loaves and fishes? I don't Amen. know what I've got in my basket. But I never had got on that thinking until it just hit me. What have I got in my basket? I ain't even got yeah. a fish or a piece of bread. But what was he in this little guy's hand? Nothing. But what are they in Christ's hands? That's how, to, and how did they get in his hands? You've got to give it to him. That's right. He didn't take it. But you know what? He could have, he could have commanded the fish. They said he's the master of the seas, yep. that he could command the fish. You said they jumped out yeah. of the sea and jumped in the frying pan in John 21. But who knows? It doesn't matter how they got there. But they jumped up and got in the frying pan. But he could command it all that. Why didn't he do that? Why did he go to all that trouble? Hmm. Watch what I can do. <laughs> and look how many I'm going to feed. I, and I never had really to this week give that any thought. But yeah. there were nothing in the boy's hands. There was absolutely nothing. Well, there was fish and bread. And that's it. That's right. Now, that's true. then it goes on down. Verse 10 said, make the people sit down. Sit down. Now, notice the Old Testament, they griped because they led, Moses led them to a dry, deserted place. Mm -hmm. Christ leads them, mercy, grace, maybe, mm -hmm. to green pastures, That's right. as David talked about. Now, Moses led them to a dry and barren land where we might as well die or go back and die. We might as well die to do something like that. But he led them back to that. Now, this boy had a lot to do with it. Andrew even brought that kid. Would you? I don't think I would have thought about that kid. I'd have took his fish and loaves, and said, you know, if you want to come and eat, come on and eat, and bring that, uh, bring that with us and everything. But he did not do it like that, and that's that's where we leave Andrew right there with this little boy. But Andrew brought. You'll explain this. Andrew brought the Greeks to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I doubt anybody else would bring them. Nobody else would. No. Mm -mm. No, they were overlooked. They weren't, you got to realize, they weren't Hebrew. They weren't part of the Jewish nation. So mm -mm. You know, they were like any other Gentile, non-Jew. They were passed over, looked over. Uh, but I find it interesting how Andrew had a heart for, look, look who he brought to Jesus. Number one, his family. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest people to bring to Amen. Jesus. I don't care who you are, right? Then he brings his brother's best friends mm -hmm. all right then he brings this kid this little boy well first of all you got to realize in the hierarchy of the culture that little boy was insignificant yeah. well. then he sees these greeks no one's going to invite those greeks to be with jesus certainly not matthew or uh probably james or john but andrew does so in andrew you find this unique person who regardless of where they're from how old they are, who they are, where they've been, what they've done, Andrew just simply knows. If I can get them to Jesus, he'll have the answer, or he'll make the difference. Where does that fit in today? Used to, we yeah. would try to get them in, then we'd try yeah. to save them. Yeah. We'd wallow That's them true. at the altar to death, <laughs> and we'd try to do this and try to do that. Yeah. Our job is to walk through that door and then let the Holy Spirit Amen. come down that aisle. Amen. That's his job. Yeah. It's not our job. I can't save you. I can't save my children, my grandkids. I can't do it. No. The rich young ruler said, good, good master, what must I do that I might inherit? No, nah, wrong answer. Thank you for yeah. playing with us. Yeah. You can't inherit eternal life. Mm -mm. And he didn't. And he was great, that young ruler. We'll talk about him sometime, even though I think he was a con man. Yeah. But I like how you use that. He brought his brother, brother's yeah. best friend, going on down the line. Yeah. I wonder whatever really happened to that kid. This is great. I've, I've always wondered that. I have That's too. a great question. But I, I think some church historians may have a, an idea, uh, but I don't think anyone actually really knows. And so really, isn't that the mystery of it? Well, I read something years ago to where yeah. 
he remained with the disciples yeah. following Christ. But after that, I've read, I, I've, yeah, I've read that too. The interesting thing is, though, that young man saw someone who could do things that he would never dream possible. Never, and knew he couldn't do. Yeah. Yeah. How, how old is Austin? 10? 11? 11. Cash, how old? There you go. Yeah. That walked around up here with us yeah. and everything, and that's their age. Here's the beautiful thing about those ages. You teach them who Jesus is, and they will never doubt who he is. Ooh, I like that. I, I tell parents that all the time. Uh, one of the things that, I'm not on a tangent, let me just make a statement. It really bothers me if we would think, well, we need to give our kids the choice if they're going to serve Jesus or not. We'll let them make that decision for themselves. If they want to go to church, they can make that decision for themselves. Well, let's follow that line of thinking. If they want to go to the dentist, we'll let them make that decision for themselves. If they want to go for the immunization shots at the doctors, let's let them make that decision for themselves. If they don't want to go to school, let's let them make that decision. See, there's some decisions we don't leave up to children in their early ages, right? We train up children to go and to serve to follow the way of the Lord. Now, there's a fine line there. You can't berate them and push it in them, right. okay? You can live it before them, and they, it may take a while for them to come back. But my point is this, at a young age when you teach a child, this is who Jesus is, this is who God is, this is what the Word of God says, it is forever true and settled in heaven, anything that con is contrary to the Word of God is wrong. You, you can train a child in a loving, godly way like that, and I really believe it has an impact. It really does. Now that's not to say those kids will be absolutely perfect, because there's no, no such thing. Is that how you were trained? Yeah. Well... I, I was absolutely. Well, you should have been. Well, I, I told you I had a drug problem when I was a kid. Drug to church every time the door opened. I got drug to opened. church on Sunday morning. Then I got drug on Sunday night. I got drug on Wednesday night. Listen, I didn't go to watch the Waltons on Thursday nights. Remember the Waltons? Yeah, I, I watch them at watch night. Them. Now. I, I went soul winning on Thursday nights as an 11-year-old kid. I was knocking on doors, going through the Romans Road with people. <laughs> That's dangerous. Who sends a kid out knocking on doors? Who like sends a that? kid to go to church? and uh, Bonanza on. Yeah. Gosh. When I was 13 years old, I was a bus captain on a church bus bringing kids to church. Oh. I, I, the only reason I'm saying this because, I mean, it's like they didn't make me do that. I wanted to do that. I wanted to serve the Lord. And so, uh, and those were, some of the, the, those were some of the methodologies that we did back then. That, but then on the other it's hand, different today. <laughs> okay. we didn't have anything else to do. Well, that is true. I didn't. You no, know, you yeah. probably did. But uh, No, mom and dad wouldn't buy me an Atari. You know what that, that is? No, not at some all. Some of you do. Some of these, some of these 80s kids knows what an Atari well, is. Well, good. I'm before the uh, 80s. I had a buddy down the road that had one. I couldn't go play with his either. <laughs> 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 they wouldn't let me video games, what it was. That's the first We just barely game. had a TV. Yeah, and, uh, rabbit ears. But, but you know, <laughs> where did that training go, go off? Now, you can over you can overtrain, too. Oh, yeah. You can oh, overtrain. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I know I tell my daughters one time I was... Uh, in church, I sat between two little girls, and somebody showed me how to bend the bobby pin. You touch them, and it managed to set them on fire. This is a girl I already had crying. This one I was working on. And I heard somebody say, excuse me just a minute. I thought, oh, my Lord, that's Daddy. <laughs> he reached over that pew and slapped me in the back of the head. My head blew up and hit the pew in front. And church is over. That eye shut. He said, give me that thing. You know what my daughter told me? You could sue him today. <laughs> I wouldn't be living today if I sued him. <laughs> now, oh, think about this right here. There is no <laughs> record anywhere of Andrew ever preaching a sermon. Yeah. There is no true. record anywhere That's true. of him performing a miracle through the name of Christ. There's not. Or writing a book named after him or scriptures named after him. Nothing. He's out there looking through that door. Mm -hmm. But what the difference is, he's happy out there looking through that yeah. door. Because he's probably got yeah. a line of people coming up and down That's that right. hall. That's right. What is the best to have that? You remember when I got saved, we wanted to get everybody saved. Yeah. Uh, like, we'd right. worry people to death to we get did. them saved. Yes. And uh, well, now your dad will testify to that. <laughs> but he's remembered for those who he brought to Christ. And you know, what about that? People don't, don't, don't really think a lot about that. 
but he was the one that done that. Andrew. There's not much of an about it. What happened to Andrew? And then I'm going to turn it over to you. What happened to Andrew? Andrew was in Greece. He was doing his teachings. Now, they did say he was teaching in Greece right at the end toward his life. He was, doing, he was teaching in Greece. The governor of Greece ordered him to stop teaching these, that stuff that you're teaching. Stop it. He refused, and he kept on. And I think uh, it might have been November the 30th, 60 A.D., Andrew was, he was a martyr. He was crucified upside down, as Peter was, on the X. And they named, now that's one thing they did do is name a cross Saint, after him, yeah, St. Saint Saint, Andrew Cross. Saint Andrew's cross yeah. Along with Peter, he said, I'm not worthy to be crucified as the Christ was. Yeah. yeah. Not to be. And, and for most other uh, church groups, they would have the order of St. Andrew or mm-hmm. the uh, ministry of St. Andrew. And it was basically a ministry uh, that was reaching out in boldness, integrity, usually to unreached groups of people. So again, that idea of outreaching, bringing in. Uh, and they used a lot of different sports, sports ministries, what have you, to do that. I saw Billy Graham laugh one time. They asked him, how many has got saved under your ministry? He <laughs> said, a lot, and walked off. He, he didn't care about the number. <laughs> yeah. But just think, out of those Greeks who all followed Christ, out of those 5,000 that were fed. But now, Christ kind of burned them at the end. He said, got anything left over? He said, yeah, well, they, might, they just happened to be 12 baskets here, one for each one of my disciples. Mm. But then he's, but one thing I'd skipped over is they said, how are we going to feed them? Christ said, you feed them. You feed them, yeah. You serve yeah. them. I don't yeah. want to serve. Well, whether they were sardines or walleyes, I don't know what they were. I don't know. They got enough to eat. They all left full on that. That's but right. Andrew is one of my heroes now since Great. I've been thinking about it. Uh, how many went to Christ through the Greeks? How many did that little boy lead to Christ? That's we true. don't know. We don't know. We don't know how many Andrew in Greece got. Yeah. And it really, the number doesn't matter. Andrew would have brought one or he'd have brought a million. doesn't yeah. matter. One thing we do know if it was Andrew or the influence of Andrew, uh, a lot of Greece was open to the preaching, teaching of the gospel by the time Paul got there. So there we go. Now, yeah. next week we're going yes. to talk on this. Can, I want you to read the emphasis on the ones that are underlined. Okay. You know how to do emphasis. Who are you looking at? Who are you looking at? Who are you looking at? Oh, I'm sorry. Who are you looking at? Who are you looking at? And who are you looking at? Next week. You be there. <laughs> <laughs> Come back and look at us. That's right. All right. Hey, guys, thanks for being yes. here. You, good our, class, Our audience Pastor. is always such a good audience here. They amen and smile. They don't throw things at us. Yep. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in, joining us on Facebook Live and on other streaming uh, media. Uh, don't forget, we'll be back Sunday morning at... 10 a.m. Jeanette Flynn's going to be preaching to us. If you've not heard Sister Jeanette preach, you're going to really enjoy it. And uh, so call and buy someone to bring them with you, okay? All right, let me pray for you. Father, thank you, Lord, for this time you've given us, God, to study your word. Lord, we love Andrew. Love the example in life that he set. Father, he knew that there were many things he couldn't do in the kingdom, but there's one thing he could do well, and that is he was a connector. He brought people to Christ. Father, help us, Lord, to live those connecting lives. Help us, God, to bring, no matter who they are, Lord, young, old, uh, folks that are part of our tradition or not, whatever the case may be, help us, Lord, to have a heart for bringing other people to you. Exactly. And, Father, we'll thank you and praise you for all you do for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good lesson. Amen. God bless you. See you Sunday.